I thought it might be time to check in with an update on our heat pump performance for autumn of this year. A good old stats video for you today. For those of you that haven't seen one of my heat pump videos before, we have a Valent Aerotherm Plus that's five kilowatts in capacity. We've got dedicated metering on the electricity supply to the heat pump and a dedicated heat meter on the pipework running from the heat pump. This allows us to track how much electricity we've used and, and how the system's performed in delivering heat in terms of efficiency or what we call the coefficient of performance. Our heat pump was installed in the summer of 2021 um, as part of a research project. So it was free to us, but it would have cost around 11,000 pounds back then. And that included replacing radiators, uh, installing the heat pump itself, installing a water tank, and doing all the electrics that are needed to service the system. If we'd paid for it and got a government grant that's currently open to everyone, it would have cost us three and a half thousand pounds to install. Our home, it's a fairly normal house. It's EPCC. It's got double glazing, uh, loft insulation. It's got modern extension, but it's also a Victorian construction. Some solid walls, some uh, some bay windows, some lightweight bay windows that were put put in later than it was built, um, and an uninsulated ventilated floor. Parts of the house feel pretty drafty, but the heat pump keeps us nice and warm. Okay, so that's the context. How is a four-year-old air source heat pump in a Victorian terrace in the grim north of England getting on this year? Well, in between the dates of the 22nd of September and the 15th of December, which I'm calling autumn, um, we've used a whopping 1,165 kilowatt hours of electricity to keep us warm and to heat hot water used for showers, baths, taps, etc. This delivered 4,115 kilowatt hours of heat. So we got an efficiency of 353% or a coefficient of performance of 3.53. That's a figure that I'm fairly happy with. A heat pump performing pretty well. You might have seen higher efficiencies on other YouTube videos or online. And at that efficiency versus a 90% efficient gas boiler, running at the gas and electricity price caps for some of this year, our costs would have been 19 pounds higher to run that heat pump than a gas boiler, which isn't great. But a few things to note, we're still subsidizing gas versus electricity and heat pump owners on the price cap tend to be punished um, as they move to, electric, uh, to, to heat pumps away from gas boilers. There will be changes to electricity costs that were announced in the budget a couple of weeks ago that will make electricity cheaper, which will help close some of the gap between gas and electricity, but it'll, it will still remain pretty big. But for us, the price cap rates aren't the ones that are driving our costs. We've been on, we haven't been on the price cap, but a time of use tariff from Octopus Energy. We use Octopus Agile at the moment and our over autumn, our average rate has been 16.3 pence per kilowatt hour, which means that running our heat pump over the last few months could have been 116 pounds cheaper than if we were on the price cap and 97 pounds cheaper than if we had a 90% efficient gas boiler providing the same comfort. So that agile rate may have been affected a little bit by charging our EV at low cost times. And that's difficult to separate and work out actually what the rate uh, cost to, to, to power the heat pump but you get the idea a time of use tariff has helped us reduce costs versus the price cap and versus a gas boiler and that's without solar panels helping to power the heat pump that would help during the autumn months where there is still daylight but also a requirement for heating and it's and that's us without using a battery to help buy cheap electricity to use when the tariff is expensive we just run the heat pump basically 24 7 and we are nice and warm all the time. Okay, so that's the costs. It's a bit more expensive to run our heat pump in autumn on the price cap when compared to a gas boiler, but quite a bit cheaper using a smart tariff from Octopus. Okay, but more importantly, what about emissions? I, I installed a heat pump, I wanted to install a heat pump because it's a reduction in emissions. It's moving towards net zero. Well, a heat pump uses that much less energy and now on average electricity is that little bit cleaner than gas per kilowatt hour too. So a gas boiler at 90% efficiency would have, would have emitted 836 kilograms of CO2 during these autumn months to provide the same heat and hot water as our heat pump. The heat pump would have emitted 206 kilograms of CO2, over 75% less. 
So a heat pump operating at an okay efficiency is 75% lower emissions using grid electricity than a gas boiler providing the same comfort. Which is why installing a heat pump can be one of the biggest steps you can, you can take in responding to climate change. Okay, that's the data for this year. What about previous years? It's four years old now. Is the heat pump getting better or worse? Well, for the same dates in 2023 and 2024, the efficiency was basically the same. 356% in 2023, 353% in 2024, 353% this year. It looks like the heat pump is fairly consistent and I will have used slightly different settings each year. We may have been away at different times each autumn, um, which m might have meant we used less hot water or we might not have heated the house for a bit of time. The weather may well have been different each year, but the efficiencies are fairly constant. So maybe we could compare on weather, that's the, th the thing that we could get data on, to see if that might have helped or hindered efficiency this year. I like to use the metric um, heating degree days. This helps normalize weather to understand how much heat that we would have needed to reach the same comfort each year. And when we consider heating degree days for 2022, 23, and tw sorry, 2023, 2024, and 2025, we've used 2% less electricity this year than last, but 22% more electricity than the year before. So I'm not sure what we did differently in 2023, but it looks like the heat pump may have been working a bit better despite the colder weather, or maybe we were a bit cooler, or maybe we didn't heat the house as much. We definitely were away for a few weeks in 2023, so that could explain some things. Anyway, it looks like we're not seeing a significant drop off in efficiency as the heat pump gets older. It's still working really well. It's still keeping us warm. It still isn't too noisy. And I think on a time of use tariff, our costs are lower than if we still had a gas boiler. Okay, that's it for now. That's stats for autumn 2025. I hope you found that interesting. If so, please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And do have a look at my website and my mailing list that will all be linked in the description below. And I hope you have a great Christmas break this year. I hope you found this video um, relevant and interesting. If you did, please do subscribe. If you wanted to support my work, please do join the channel. And if you wanted to work with me on a variety of things uh, linked to decarbonisation and net zero strategy, please do get in touch with me via my website, sb-energy.co.uk. Thank you for watching.